Hello and welcome fellow photography enthusiasts. The reason I am putting this video together is because, well, quite frankly, after searching YouTube, I have not found very many informational videos regarding uh, photographing the beautiful 395 and the Eastern Sierras as you make your way into Nevada, uh, the Walker River, uh, Bishop, and everything in between, Lee Vining, and uh, all these wonderful, wonderful places. So uh, take a couple minutes and um, we'll just walk through some of these wonderful places. I've been up and down the 395 many, many times and uh, throughout my life there is just so many, so many places that I have wanted so bad to pull over and explore and uh, get photos of. And uh, over the past couple of years I've been able to do that, uh, especially on this last trip. Uh, it was just absolutely fantastic having a late winter. And so uh, here we go. If you are anything like me and you absolutely love that western uh, photography look, those old ranches, old barns and things like that, you are going to love the 395, uh, especially after leaving Mammoth uh, and once we hit the Lee Vining and uh, Walker River area. But starting from the beginning, if you're leaving from the LA area or LAX, that area, uh, the first uh, town you're really going to get to that is very interesting, it would be uh, Lone Pine. And within Lone Pine there, you have the Whitney Porthole, as well as the Alabama Hills. Uh, and these are very, very familiar spots, especially the Alabama Hills. Uh, you will see a lot about Alabama Hills and Mono Lake on uh, YouTube. That seems to be the only locations people uh, are interested in uh, actually photographing when there is so, so much more. And it doesn't have to be autumn. Uh, you don't have to go uh, September to December. Uh, to get these wonderful, wonderful photos. Uh, you can go uh, anytime because the Sierras are always absolutely beautiful. Uh, but, I, you know, admittedly springtime and uh, when it is green and after a long winters and things like that, after big snow, um, it is a most beautiful time to uh, be there. So the first place you're going to hit is Lone Pine. Within Lone Pine, you have the Whitney Porthole. Uh, there's the Lone Pine Creek, which has a lot of beautiful shots. Uh, there is, of course, uh, Mount Whitney sitting there. Uh, beautiful morning shots. Get that Alpen glow. Uh, but let's just keep moving down the road here. We have Bishop. And within Bishop, uh, there are several spots. Uh, you have Lake Sabrina. And uh, that is up the one, 168, I want to say. Uh, anyways, just very few roads. <laughs> very, very easy. I think it's uh, Vine, Lion Street. Lion Street in Bishop, and uh, basically it takes you right up the mountain. Uh, Lake Sabrina, you also have North Lake. Very, very, very beautiful scenic spots up there um, for morning photography. Once we're down in the valley in Bishop, uh, of course you have the Owens River. Now the Owens River can be a challenge as you cannot see most, you know, you can't, you can't really see the Owens River where it's at. So uh, you might need kind of a four-wheel drive vehicle or at least something that can go slightly off-road because you're going to want to wander, uh, if you're going to shoot the Owens, you're going to want to wander off-road, uh, off the 395 there to your right-hand side and uh, just kind of check out all those reservoir roads. If you take Lion Street down, I heard this from a local, take Lion Street down towards the channel, you can open that gate and uh, take that channel road along, I think you're heading heading back towards LA, heading that direction. And that way you can hopefully get a view. She said, or what I was told is you can get a view uh, where you have the actual river and the mountains, the mount, the, the uh, Sierras uh, in the background there, which you'll find is hard because you're trying to get a shot from the end and be on, make it appear as you're on the other side of the Owens River facing the mountains which is a little bit, you got to find a kind of a, a winding spot where you can do that. Otherwise, you're going to be shooting the opposite facing mountains, which don't have as much snow. Uh, they would have snow in the wintertime, but other, other times of year, you would probably be, you know, hard pressed to find some snow on them, which isn't quite as a spectacular shot. Most shots I've seen are indeed facing that other way. It seems to be a really challenging shot to actually get the river and the mountains, the, the large snowy mountains, the Sierras in, in the background there. But the uh, if you search hard enough and you do your homework and you show up early, in my case, I showed up early and uh, did my best, uh, kind of just went mad, just kind of trying to uh, go up and down those roads, finding a composition. But uh, I got a few shots. You can see a couple here. 
of the uh, little reservoir going down there, one of the actual uh, river itself. Uh, not so happy. In fact, I kind of left Bishop feeling a, a little bummed out about that that kind of shoot there and what I got and what I didn't. Moving on, we have uh, from Bishop, <clears throat> your next stop is going to be Mammoth. And uh, as you come up the 395, there's a wonderful spot. It's actually on the opposite side of the 395. It's the lookout, and it overlooks all the Bishop Valley. And uh, that's a great spot. You kind of have to be heading back towards L.A., but if you have the time, you can kind of turn around on the 395, heading towards Mammoth, and head kind of shoot back, stop off at that lookout. Uh, depending on the time of day, I mean, I would imagine if the sun's going down, you happen to be right, right there. It's just going to be phenomenal. Uh, you can get just the most amazing shot. Uh, the kind of a side shot of the Sierras as they kind of cascade down. Uh, it's just a terrific, terrific shot from the top of the hill there, top of the mountain there, the top of the pass. And moving up that pass, the next thing you're going to hit is Mammoth. Uh, we've all seen plenty of pictures of Mammoth. Uh, in my experience, most people kind of hit Mammoth during the day. I don't know if you spent the night at Mammoth. Um, there's just endless, endless lakes. You have a, oh my goodness, you have, in that area, you have Lake Convict. Uh, you have Rainbow Falls, which while I was there was closed. Devil's Post Pile. So for a wonderful waterfall shot, and you don't have to hike too far to get at Rainbow Falls. I think it's under a mile. So basically anyone could go get a really nice uh, waterfall shot. Moving on from Mammoth, the next thing you're going to see there uh, headed towards Lee Vining is you have the June Loop. Uh, the June Loop is incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Also... Uh, once again, uh, if you just take the time to get out of your car and hike around, there are just plenty and plenty of compositions and locations everywhere you turn. Uh, beauty abound. And the June Loop, man, I could just keep driving and driving and driving. Um, I did not take a whole lot of pictures during the June Loop. It was midday, and I was uh, had other plans. I was headed towards Tahoe. So I just kept moving, but uh, plenty to see in the June Loop, plenty to shoot, definitely. Uh, moving along towards Lee Vining out of the June Loop, uh, just uh, now here's where we get into the really good stuff here. Uh, just before uh, Lee Vining, now there's two, two major attractions in Lee Vining. You have, of course, Mono Lake, which is the trophy of Lee Vining. And then you also have more, what I came for was the rustic, um, well, like here, this cabin here, just this, this is, this is why I basically took the trip is to get as much of this type of Western, uh, structures and barns and things like that as I could and just try to capture that Western gritty essence. Um, this is a rather online, this is a pretty famous picture here. I took several compositions of it. Uh, several distances and uh, it was just a lot of serendipity played into it uh, the late winter gave me snow remained on those mountains in the back that was actually taken let's see the sunset's really late right now um, that was actually taken like 6 30 there just happened to be clouds that came into town uh, while I was there that weekend actually that was a Thursday uh, so the, while I was there, there during the week the clouds happened to uh, be there and um, the gods smiled on me and uh, Mono Lake turned out amazing later on also. So I would recommend just about five. This is about five miles before Lee Vining. Here I'm giving you exact location. On the left-hand side before you hit Lee Vining, uh, about five miles before Lee Vining. Of course, the first thing you're going to see, though, is the turnoff to the uh, south uh, Tufas, Tufas, Tufas. And that is the main attraction of Mono Lake. So as you come into Lee Vining, one, on your right-hand side, you're going to see the entrance to the south, Tufas, Tufas. And uh, go ahead and make a right there. It's about a 10-minute drive down to the beach. So you want to take that into consideration uh, when you take off. Of course, you always want to be early to a location, earlier than you think you should. And um, But take that drive into consideration. It's kind of a dirt road. Your car tends to slip sideways and this and that over the all the uh, the rocks and things like that. So drive carefully when you get there. Remember, you're going to need three dollars, not a five dollar bill, but you're going to need three dollars. I suppose you could make a five dollar contribution and give them two bucks, but it is a three dollar charge. You're going to need to fill out it or actually get a quick little envelope, put it in there, put a ticket on your windshield, and then it is oh probably about a quarter mile walk down to the actual toughest. Um, 
it's kind of a zoo there. Even on a Thursday night, uh, we had a workshop of about nine people show up just before everything got really good. Um, everyone tended to be uh, pretty polite and pretty courteous. Um, some showed more etiquette than others. But uh, from what I understand from other photographers, that place is always a zoo. Uh, so I don't know. I just kind of find a spot, pick my location, composition, and you know I'm kind of a camper. I just camped out on it and managed to uh, walk away early and um, turned around. And then I saw this going on in the sky. So I ran back, and uh, everyone's jaw kind of dropped. I felt really lucky to capture this image. Um, there were just some marvelous, marvelous clouds going overhead, and they uh, they just played into the whole drama of the situation. So I left that night, obviously, really, really happy. And uh, I could show you the raw, the raw image of that. I shit you not, the clouds. That is not. Uh, I didn't. I didn't add a bunch of uh, processing to that. The clouds turned blood red. It was just amazing. The sunset was just spectacular, jaw dropping. Um, not a lot of processing going on there. That is absolutely pretty much what it looked like. So two things, as you enter Levining, the first thing you're gonna do is hit mono and do your homework. Find out where you want to be there. So when you come back at night, you'll be ready to go. And then after mono on the left hand side. You're going to see those two, sh these two shacks right here. And this is just, <laughs> how can you not want to uh, get that? So these are literally within three minutes of each other, these two compositions on, uh, you know, on the road. So that makes it just absolutely freaking amazing that you can, you could, you can hit both of these the same night. You know, if you only have one night to do all this, you could feasibly hit both of these. I did it. This is all one night. Um, feel incredibly blessed that I got the right conditions to do this and uh, we will keep heading on the 395 uh, and you're going to hit uh, a couple lakes in there I think you have uh, Lake Topaz Topaz Lake and then you're gonna start hitting the Walker area the Walker River and you're kind of heading to inching towards the Nevada border and this is just really 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 where it got really good for me um, everything along the, the scenic drive along the Walker River is just phenomenal um, given the time of day where the sun is I can imagine morning or, or night um, it was kind of midday when I was there I got this one picture I took a one shot uh, of the walker just kind of pulled off be be really careful pulling off the 395 it is a crazy crazy highway and there's a lot of big trucks and cars and tourists and things coming around the corners um, you got to be really freaking careful. Even when you're careful, you can you can make mistakes, and you just have to be really careful hopping around with the. In place. This is right off the Walker River, um, literally to the left. There is the 395. Kind of cropped it out of the shot there, and uh, just keep heading up along the Walker River. You're going to start. Your jaw is just going to start dropping, and and you're just going to your eyes are going to open to just endless endless compositions. But we still are getting to the good stuff. Uh, about an hour after that, uh, on the left-hand side, as we come into Nevada, uh, you're going to hit this this whole the whole Walker City area and the city after that called uh, Coal Coal something Coalville Coal something. And uh, I wish I could tell you the name. I forgot the name. But this area is just phenomenal. It's like uh, it's like Bonanza. But the uh, I'll show you some pictures here. There is a uh, public forest, there is a national forest uh, campground called Obsidian. And if you look, you can just go ahead and search Obsidian. It's a left-hand turn right off the 395. You'll have to look for it. And right from that turn down from there is this little barn set up with the wonderful, just amazing. But if you make a left up to that, that campground road, um, that Obsidian road follows up this amazing um, valley. And there's a river that runs down this lush, lush valley. And right up the valley, we run into this amazing scene. You take a dirt road down from the main road. And you have this amazing uh, old kind of stable horse area that is just uh, sitting there by itself for you to uh, shoot all day long. And it is just, it's just uh, it's a photographer's dream, really. Uh, I had the whole thing to myself. And there are clouds in the sky and snow on the mountains. Um, just shot that up uh, six different ways, every every which way I could. Got back in my truck and continued heading up the road uh, to the peak. The road goes about four miles, 
and Cress at the top of the river. I believe that is the source of the, might be the source of the Walker River. I'm not quite sure. It looked like the source, but the river sources uh, at the top of that, it's called Obsidian Campground, actually. And there is a small bridge at the top and with this beautiful stream with aspens, trees, and things like that crossing it. You can see right there. Uh, wonderful. I mean, I don't think you could find a better place uh, along that route for a long exposure. I was there about seven years ago and saw this when I was exploring around and made that dream come true. And uh, this is really just, uh, this whole area is just the peak of it. Um, I can't uh, encourage you to take this drive enough and just keep looking to the left, looking to the left. Take every dirt road. Um, if you live in the city, uh, you get used to following rules and uh, you get used to asking permission and asking permission is a good thing. But once you get out here and um, you got to remember, no one can no, <laughs> you can do what you want. Uh, as long as you close the gate behind you, if there's a dirt road, you can take it. Um, as, and as long as you take care of yourself and make sure you're safe so that you don't have to call someone to come pick you up, um, you can do what you want. Just once you get back here, you can just explore the Sierras and find amazing, amazing old structures and compositions. And if you're into Western photography and things like that, like I am, here's one more I wanted to show you. I met a farmer uh, down in the Nevada side uh, just after Walker. On the right-hand side, there's some wonderful, wonderful farmland, these lush farmlands and, and creeks going across and bridges. It is just right out of a storybook, just, just amazing. Uh, got some beautiful pictures of his farm. Uh, it's just on and on. It's just on and on. Um, I, you will, t you will wear yourself out getting in and out of your car and in and out of your car. And when you, uh, when you look at what you got later on, you'll just, you'll never gotten so many keepers <laughs> in a single day in your life, because <laughs> you just, you just can't go wrong. But I hope you get some information and go out and enjoy the Eastern Sierras. Enjoy the whole 395. Take a couple days. It's a long freaking road and there's lots to see. Lots of turnoffs. Uh, it is just endless, folks. So take a vacation. Hit the 395 and uh, take lots of pictures.